All right, I have found and gotten rid of the last noise. This is not going to be a long video because, you know, you've, you've heard this and you'll hear it again when the owner comes over to test out with harp and his guitar. But here is without the switch switched. So this is stock. Very happy with that. The low end response is very full for an eight inch speaker. Just above noon, I can turn it up from there. I can turn the treble down if you want to emphasize the lows. I can set it all very flat. Let's do that for, the, for a little bit. And it goes bright if you want. Or you can do the scoop where you just crank both of them. Sounds like a tiny twin. Very bell-like. It's very nice. It's a conversational level because it's just a little champ, five watts, whatever. And the speaker sounds uh, just about perfect. Uh, so what I did uh, to get it to this point, and you'll, you'll hear some high gain stuff in a minute, is um, without shotgunning. A, a shotgunning is what I refer to as a technique where people just change out a whole bunch of stuff in hopes that somewhere in that is what was actually, actually needed to be changed was. And um, I try not to do that because it's usually a sign of an amateur. And uh, on amps like that January of 64 Twin Reverb, I certainly won't be shotgunning. I'll only be changing out components that need to be changed out, and I will take the time to identify them individually. But I had tried to do that purest approach on this amp, and um, obviously, as you can hear in the previous video, it still had some issues, and the clock was ticking, and it's, at the end of the day, it's only a champ, and did not need to have a, uh, a major repair bill. So while I tried to retain original parts as much as necessary, at some point, you just got to say, I need to fix this app, and it needs to be fixed well uh, for a reasonable cost. So I looked at the app, and the, the things which stuck out, stuck out to me as being does, and I had tempt, was tempted to change them originally, were the two plate resistors, the 200K plate resistors, and the 100K slope resistor, and the two uh, interstage dropping resistors in the power supply, the 1K and the 10K all of which were one watt carbon composites. Uh, and those can absorb humidity, absorb moisture, can change your behavior with temperature, uh, can have vibrational issues. And uh, at that point, I thought they had overstayed their welcome. So as you can see in the photo, uh, in the power supply, I put in some two, uh, two watt metal oxides. And in the uh, uh, preamp, the two plate resistors and the slope resistor, I put in uh, some one watt carbon film resistors, which have a lot of the same beneficial qualities that we like the sound of as carbon composites without uh, the, so many potential downsides. And an amp with as few stages as a champ, you're not gonna hear the difference between a carbon comp resistor and a carbon film resistor as far as you know, mojo goes. You will hear a noisy old carbon comp and that's what we had. So in addition to doing that, I also uh, removed the RCA speaker jack, cleaned all the metal surfaces with uh, deoxid, put it back together, and then I added a 1.5K grid stopper on the output tube because, uh, well, Fender admitted that on the Champ and the Princeton because they were their, quote, student model amps. It's a better design to have a grid stopper resistor right there at the tube socket. So that's added 
and I'm really pleased with this now. Let's switch to the Les Paul and do some higher gain stuff. All right, with the Les Paul, volume on 10, a little mids boost thing, uh, engaged. stuff, uh, especially the Joe Walsh and Jimmy Page stuff is right there. Um, and let's check out that C sharp that was giving us so many fits before. All right, now let's do a C sharp um, seven sharp nine. Is there? Is that be flat? That was a Tweed Deluxe, and I'm not Larry Carlton, and I've been playing the Strat so much I keep overbending on this Les Paul. But a better player than I, or at least a more practiced player, would be able to get some really cool sounds with this. Now, a trade-off with that mid-boost thing is that the more it's turned up, the more the tone stack is defeated. So you can't really roll down the treble if you have that cranked as much as this. But that's why we have knobs like this. We have volume knobs too. is sounding really nice now it's very versatile very useful and i think the owner is going to have a lot of fun i look forward to hearing what he does uh, with his harp to it but this is a neat little thing it does where you're right on the edge of feedback mm -hmm. 